Hello, I'm taking on a challenge to beat every playable Nintendo published game. Welcome to the next episode. The next games are Pinball and Versus Pinball. That's right, not long after Game & Watch Pinball was released, Nintendo developed another pinball game, this time for the Famicom. Something of note about this one was that this was the first Nintendo game worked on by Satoru Iwata. He was working with HAL Laboratory at the time, and he was initially working on a port of Joust for the Famicom. However, Nintendo ended up not being able to release Joust on the Famicom at the time, perhaps due to the fact that their deal with Atari to distribute the Famicom in the West had fallen through. After working on this title that didn't end up releasing until a few years later, Iwata moved on to help Nintendo with a few of their other Famicom titles instead. Like many of Nintendo's early Famicom games, this one also received a Versus System port to the arcades. It seems a bit strange to me to go all the way to an arcade just to play a simulated pinball machine instead of a real one, but I don't know, maybe there was an audience for something like this. I started with the NES game. Coming up with the goal for this one is a bit strange, but I knew I wanted to at least beat every major challenge on the machine. The game also has two game modes, and the manual just says that game mode A is for beginners and game mode B is for experts. I think they made the ball heavier in game mode B, which I think in turn made it go faster. Immediately when starting, I noticed that the game had no music at all, just sound effects from the machine. The pinball machine in this game is stretched over two screens. On the top screen, there are a few ways to earn points other than the standard entry lanes and bumpers. There were some drop targets on the left to clear, and I think you just earn extra points for clearing all four of them. There was a lane on the top left with lights on it, and if you went through this lane, some seals on the screen would bounce some beach balls next to the 100 bumper, earning you a bunch of extra points. The big challenge on this screen, though, was the slot machine. You had to first launch the ball through a lane on the right, which would cause the slots to spin. Each time you hit a panel on the slot, it would freeze it, and the goal was to get three in a row. Doing so would give you a bunch of points depending on what type of three in a row you made. Additionally, regardless of what three in a row you made, the machine would change color and place a safety piece on the bottom middle, making it harder to fall down. This doesn't end up lasting all that long though, and I think going through one of the lanes on the top causes it to reset and go away. Once you fall down, you'll find a bunch of stuff on the bottom screen too. There's some drop targets on the side, labeled 1-7, through seven, some playing cards at the top, three eggs near the bottom, and a mysterious portal in the top right. The three eggs changed every time you passed over one of them. They can either be an egg, a chick, or nothing at all. If you get all three to be chicks, some safety springs will appear in the out lanes. This is always nice to have, and thankfully getting these lined up really isn't all that difficult. The springs go away after a single usage though, so you'll still need to be careful. When you clear all seven drop targets on the left, an opening back to the shooter lane opens up on the right, and an exit sign appears. Unfortunately, I had a lot of trouble actually getting into this exit. I never even got through it in the NES version. But after doing it in the Versus System version, it did exactly what it looked like. It just took you straight back to the shooter lane. For the cards on the top, you had to pass through each section to flip over all the cards and reveal a royal flush. Doing so will cause an object to appear in the bottom middle, similar to the slot machine on the top level. Flipping over all these cards turned out to be very difficult, and it ended up being one of the last things I saw in the game. Finally, if you enter the portal in the top right, you enter a minigame. In this minigame, you play as Mario, and you are trying to rescue Pauline from a cage. You move a platform left to right and bounce the pinball over a bunch of numbers. Each time you pass over a number, it changes color. And if you manage to make all of a column the same color, the platforms trapping Pauline will shrink. Shrink the platforms enough and Pauline will fall down. You have to catch her and bring her to one of the escape routes on the side. Doing so earns you a bunch of extra points and she immediately gets herself stuck up there once again. If the ball falls down one of the sides during this mini game, the ball gets ejected back to the top screen. This mini game can be really tough as the ball could bounce around in a pretty unpredictable manner, and Mario isn't always able to move fast enough to keep up with it. All right, that's all the main challenges on the machine. Let's see how long it takes for me to clear them all. While I did manage to get three chicks lined up on my first run, I didn't get to see much else. I'm honestly not all that good at pinball games. I always seem to end up with the ball going straight into the out lanes. I could probably control the ball a bit better, but for a noob like me, it often just feels like luck in the end. My second run went a lot better though. In this one, I activated the seals and cleared the four drop targets on the top screen. After this, on my third run, I won the slot machine too. And then finally, in my fourth run, after clearing out all seven drop targets and seeing the exit sign, I also finally managed to rescue Pauline during this run. That was almost all the challenges cleared, but I hadn't created a royal flush yet. I decided to go into game mode B for this one, just so I could play around with it and see what it was like. Additionally, while playing, I found out that the speedrun has two categories, saving Pauline and getting to 100,000 points. I was mostly content with clearing all the challenges and rescuing Pauline, but maybe I would go for 100,000 points if I had a good enough run going. I played around in game mode B for a while, but honestly I was still struggling to get that royal flush. 
After my fifth attempt in game mode B, I decided to just switch back to game mode A to see it. On my very first attempt back in game mode A, I finally did it. I got all five cards flipped over and the Royal Flush was complete. Finally. I ended up doing really good in this run too, and I even made it all the way to 100,000 points. When I made it here, something wild happened. My paddles completely vanished. At first, I thought this was the game forcing an ending, and I let my ball tumble into the bottom. It turns out, the paddles were just simply invisible, and reaching 100,000 points just made the game harder for a bit. Huh, I guess I see why the speedruns use this as one of their targets. While it wasn't my original goal, I'm glad I eventually got to see this. With that, pinball on the NES was complete. On to Versus Pinball. This version was largely similar, although there were a few minor changes here and there. The first of these changes was that the game now had music. The main song while playing was a little strange though, and it sounded like something you'd hear from an old Metroid game. There was also a new song for the Mario Mini game, which I heard way too much and it got pretty repetitive. <laughs> the other big change was that after getting three chicks on the bottom screen, you had a chance to earn even more protection by lining up the three chicks again. Once you did it, the chicks would change to purple. While the new protection was not immediately apparent, if you dropped the ball in the drain, a red circle with the face would appear and bring your ball back to safety. Once you used this up, you would need to align three chicks to get it again. It turns out, this red character is actually Bubbles, from the up-and-coming game Clue Clue Land, which wasn't even out yet. In Japan, they didn't even use Bubbles. Instead, they used a bird character called Achilles, who only appeared in the Japanese exclusive programming application Family Basic. For some reason, in this version, clearing some of the bonus challenges would also cause your paddles to momentarily vanish. I guess they removed the paddles vanishing at 100,000 points and just put it in a bunch of places throughout the game instead. Speaking of, scoring was totally different in this version for some reason. I'm not even sure what was different, but I made it to 100,000 points with ease, and I even made it to 200,000 points one time, which caused the whole machine to change color. Other than seeing that color change at 200,000 points, the only other goal I really wanted to do was to clear all the challenges again. In my first attempt, I cleared the four drop targets on the top screen, and I activated the seals. In my third attempt, I managed to get three penguins in a row in the slot machine, and on my fourth run, I lined up three yellow chicks, three purple chicks, and knocked down all drop targets on the bottom screen. I was making good progress so far, but it wasn't until my tenth run that I finally got the royal flush. All that was left was to rescue Pauline. For some reason, this took me so much longer this time around. I just kept failing the minigame. I don't know if it was actually harder in this version, but I just could not get it. One time, I even got Pauline down, but the ball exited before Pauline actually escaped, so I didn't get the extra points. Finally though, after two hours of attempts, I finally rescued Pauline. With that, I completed every challenge and Versus Pinball was complete. On to the reviews. Well, I feel like I've been saying this a lot about genres lately, but once again, pinball games aren't really my cup of tea. Similar to a lot of the arcade games I've played, it's probably due to the fact that I'm just not all that into high score chasers, and in some ways pinball is the pinnacle of a high score chaser. I also find randomly falling into the outlanes to be particularly annoying when it comes to pinball, although that may just be my lack of skill talking. As far as the game itself goes, there's nothing particularly bad about the game, but there's not a ton positive for me to say either. It definitely feels a lot better than pinball for the Game & Watch, but that wasn't a particularly high bar to clear. There's not a ton of depth either, and while I can see some people having a good time with this one, it's not really for me. I gave both versions of the game a 4 out of 10. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more of these in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you won't miss out on the next one. Also leave a like if you enjoyed it, since it will help the channel grow and motivate me to continue this series. I hope I will see you in the next step of my quest to beat every Nintendo game.